and especially when you're talking about a kid with a medical condition, there are some roles that have to be filled no matter what, right? But it is okay to look at your partner, your kid, other family members and say, can we just reevaluate our roles really quick? Like, I don't know how I got to be like um, the, the triage person for the pump for the next two and a half hours. Hi everyone, I'm Kendra. i really excited to have Dr. Amy here with us today. The topic of kind of the impact of, of type one and parenting um, a child with type one and the impact on, on couples, on families, on extended family came up um, as an issue for discussion. So we with, thought it would be a useful one to talk about because um, it does add another layer of stress and dynamic to families that um, can you know, manifest in different ways. So one of the things that I always think about in terms of for myself personally and, and how I feel, um, I feel type one interacting in, in my relationship with my husband is and we have three children with type one, which you may remember if you've been on earlier calls. So we have like, um, a lot of, you know, we're, I don't, I think if it's one or if it's three, it's still like a big part of your life and big part of your thinking about, but it reminds me of when, when we had our first child, we had gotten this book, which, um, had different comics in it on parenting. And there was this one comic, which has stuck with me all these years of, of, um, a husband and wife in bed and it's the middle of the night. And like from outside the room, you can see the babies crying. You can hear the babies crying with a thought bubble and both the mom and the dad, their eyes are wide open. And then their thought bubbles are like, just don't move, don't move, don't move. And he'll think you're asleep. And it's like trying to pass that. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. He'll get it. If I'm, if I stay here and I feel like just insert like the Dexcom sensor for the baby crying in that, in the hall. And that feels like me a lot of times. And, and I think part of it is, um, so I, one of the things I wanted to bring up with you, Dr. Amy, is how do you, when you have a lot of pressures and a lot of um, just things to attend to. And those are all like the obvious ones of getting up in the middle of the night. But then there's also who's going to spend the next hour and a half on the phone with Edge Park trying to get the pump orders correct or whatever it is. Um, and how do you, I find myself having to really remind myself not to keep score, not to be like, you know, I, you know, what, and it, I think the balance for me and what I'd love to hear your thoughts on is like, how do you not keep score while at the same time, when we're both experiencing sort of the pressures and the demands, um, you know, making sure you ask for what you need, which can be challenging if the other person sort of in who's in the same environment needs the same thing at the same time. So just if you have any insights on that kind of dynamic, it'd be helpful. Let me, let me break this down a little bit. So first the question is like roles, right? Who's going to be on the phone for the next two and a half hours? Who's managing X, Y, or Z? And the other one is kind of related to that is like, what happens when we start keeping score? And certainly that happens in any partnership, but especially when you have a child with any kind of chronic medical condition. So I want to offer just a couple of thoughts on that. You know, first of all, in any partnership, it's okay to reestablish roles, right? So let me use a non-type one example, right? So I don't know how it came to be, but I am like the laundry doer for the entire household of my family. And people can vocalize complaints at any time about how I've done their laundry or the fact that I mismatched it or didn't get done on time. And then I realized that like, wait a second, I would like to no longer have that role and I would like somebody else to be the role of the laundry doer. And it also dawned on me that perhaps my children could take part in doing their own laundry. Um, but Wonderfully, my fiance was like, I actually love doing laundry. I was like, what? Like, why did I not know this? And you've just been like not doing this. Here's my point, right? Obviously, and especially when you're talking about a kid with a medical condition, there are some roles that have to be filled no matter what, right? But it is okay to look at your partner, your kid, other family members and say, can we just reevaluate our roles really quick? Like, I don't know how I got to be like, um, the, the triage person for the pump for the next two and a half hours. Like, is there anybody else that can do that or wants to do that while also doing these other tasks so that I might partake in something else? But I think what happens is, you know, early on with our children, with our partner, we kind of get established into these roles and then that just becomes our role. So I want to first just give you permission to go back and review your roles, right? And have open, transparent conversations about like, well, what is it that you're doing to manage X, Y, or Z? And what am I doing to manage X, Y, or Z? 
Um, sometimes, right, as much as our partner, and I'll just speak to marriage and partnership, not including all of your kids, sometimes our partners, as much as they try, are not really great mind readers, um, and they are not aware of all the things that are on our list, right? And so you might be managing a couple of aspects of your child's medical care and 62 other things for your household that your partner's not aware of or vice versa, or just things that are on your mind, right? So we have all of our roles and responsibilities, but then we have all these other things that are kind of taking up time and space. And what happens is that's when we start to keep score. So the second part of that question about keeping score, it's like, I'm doing all these things. And oh, by the way, the other 62 things that are on my list, and you're not, you're only doing two, right? I only see you doing two, but unless we have a transparent conversation about what are the roles and what are the other things that are on my mind, in my heart that I'm worried about, that I feel like are my task, my job, my responsibility, either stated or otherwise, then we'll continue to be stuck in that role. And what happens is in that role or those jobs or all the things that we're holding lead to resentment, lead to frustration, lead to overwhelm, lead to miscommunication, right? When sometimes if we begin to state that and we're transparent, then our partner can say, oh, I didn't, I didn't even know that was on your list. I can take that from your list, right? Or I can share in that. Or is that something that can wait until X, Y, or Z? I don't know if any of you are like me, but like I tend to be kind of a type A personality, right? And so like, I'm just like, I'll do it and I'll do it now. And I'm the only one that can do it. So I'll get it done, right? And then I have resentment and frustration about that. But in actuality, like it could wait. There's some mm -hmm. stuff that could wait. Somebody else could help me. I could ask for help. Mm -hmm. There's that. You know, so I, what I thought is one, like when you're saying, you know, I can ask for help and I can, I can, ex, you know, accept that help, but also, you know, accept people maybe not doing something exactly the way I would have done it. And so there's this a little bit of the control issue, which I think is even harder with type one. Like I have that issue if someone doesn't like clean the kitchen the way I would have cleaned it, but it's like a different level when it's like someone's going to manage this differently than I would have managed it. So I can see, but yet I think there's an element of needing to let go of a little bit of that control as long as there's no it's like not not a endangering health or safety and then the other thing i thought of when you were talking is sometimes for me it, it sometimes it is about having to reestablish roles but sometimes it's really just about like oh i realize actually what i want here is just acknowledgement like i'm okay with having gotten up but i would really love it if if it was like, thanks for getting up last night. And I didn't have to, I really appreciated that. And I remember I try to do that because I, and I don't do it. I don't do it consistently enough for sure. But I especially do it when my husband's been on the phone with Edge Park for two and a half hours, because I am like, oh man, am I grateful? So like that one, he does get acknowledged for. And then there are a million things that he doesn't, but sometimes it's not even needing to redistribute. And just thinking this out loud from what you said, I'm like, wow, sometimes I'm actually okay with the amount of work I do or the laundry or whatever it is. If, if my family was like, oh, I appreciate that. That would make a big difference, but I also appreciated, but the, the need to kind of revisit those roles. We have a, a catchphrase in our family of like, oh, is this becoming like the mango? Because somehow 20 years ago in the beginning of our relationship, I had a way of cutting mango and <laughs> it became that like, whenever we were eating mango, I was the one who cut it. And like, it took me like 10 years to be like, I don't really like cutting mango. Like, can, can someone else cut the mango? And so now whenever there's an issue like that, it's like, oh, wait a minute, is this a mango issue? And it's a good like shorthand for like, oh, I didn't realize we need to reevaluate this role. So that was helpful to conceive of it that way. Mm -hmm.